Hi, I'm Andre from Museogenic and I'm going to show you how to implement a physics-based radial lever switch. So let's see how this works. So we have a lever that rotates around the point and turns on a light. And if we let it go, it comes back to its position. And it's also affected by uh, weights. We can uh, attach weights to it and it will... Um, turn on. So let's see how we can implement this. So we're gonna use a static mesh for the base, another one for the handle. So the handle it's gonna rotate around this point like this and to a certain angle and it's gonna try to come back to its original position. So we're going to do that using a physics constraint. So let's go ahead and create the actor. So we're going to create the two static meshes for the base. And for the handle. And we're also going to add a physics constraint. Now because the handle moves, we have to simulate physics. And we're going to have to change its mass to 0 0.5. I'll show you why later. Uh, now let's link the objects to the physics constraint. So this here, base and handle. And will also disable the collision between the two, like this. Now, let's set the limits of the physics constraints. So the linear limits, leave them locked. Lock also the angular limits and we'll just un unlock the uh, rotation in the vertical plane around the y-axis. So this one. So as you can see, it's a little bit shifted from the vertical. Uh, so we're just going to rotate the physics constraint so we can see this more clearly. We could leave it like this, but uh, because the rotation it doesn't matter, actually. it What matters is the um, the initial position and rotation between the two objects that are linked, but not the position of the physics constraint. So we're just going to rotate this 90 degrees like this. And um, yes, I think she should be okay. So for the limits here, so as you can see, we can rotate this at the 40, 45 degree angle, uh, left and right from the vertical. And we all, we only have to disable the self-constraint here. And in order to make it come back to its original position, uh, we're going to use um, an angular motor. So let's go here and select twist and swing, and check swing. And actually, we don't want it to come back to its original position. We want it to, to come back to this position. Oh, sorry. Like this. So, if we look here, it's actually should be plus 45 degrees. Okay. So, if we go back again to the target orientation here, we check swing and we put here 45. And put the strength up 3000. And um, we also need a target velocity of zero. This is so it dampens the movement so it doesn't wobble too much. So we put this 50 here. So let's try it like this. So drag it in. So as you can see, it comes down to that position. Now the the only problem is 
that its position is here. So if you look at the axis like this, it's toward the plus of the, the x axis, or as here, So if you look here, now the the axis is like this, and if we rotate towards the plus of the y of uh, the x-axis, it's actually minus. So I don't know what why that happens. Uh, it's probably probably has to do with the physics constraint, but I don't know why it doesn't. Its target orientation here it's reversed so to fix that actually we actually rotate the physics constraint here on the z-axis with 180 degrees and this will leave to zero here and this will fix it so we'll rotate it around so if we try again now it actually is in the right position now. It's uh, plus 45, not minus 45. So it also comes back. Okay. Now switch, in order to be switch, it has to turn something on. So uh, we'll turn this uh, light bulb on, but first we need to get this, the reference of this uh, light bulb in the our um, object. So that we can do by going into our switch and adding an actor reference here. It's called linked object. It's the object that is gonna affect. Let's make it instance editable and change it to actor reference. Like this. So now if we compile, we can see it here and we can take the light bulb and edit. So now we have the reference of the light bulb inside our handle. Now, uh, in order to uh, turn the light on, we're gonna say if, so its initial position is like this. So if we w wanna turn it on, it's gonna be like this. So it's gonna be in the minus side. So we're going to have to take the rotation of the handle. So this is going to happen every frame. We're going to take the rotation of the handle, get rotation. And because the rotation of the handle, it's in world coordinates, we're, we're going to have to uh, translate that to the actor coordinates. So for that, we get the actor transform like this, which is, if we look closely, it's the actor to world transform. So in order to get the coordinates of the handle from world to actor, we're gonna have to use the inverse transform. Like this. And uh, we're just gonna use the rotation around the Y axis. So here we can break this down and take only the rotation around the y-axis. And we're gonna say if this is less than zero, that means the, um, the state of the lever is on, uh, the lever switch is on. So, so we keep this, so this is the current state. So we also need uh, the last state that it was on in order to compare it to the current one. If it's changed, we're gonna do something. If not, there's no point in doing anything. So let's create another variable that we call on. It's gonna be a Boolean. And I'll say if this is different than the current state, then we're gonna do something. 
so we're gonna have a branch here okay now so this is this means that the state of the lever switch has changed so we want to remember that for the next time so we set the variable here to what we have calculated okay now we want to affect the light bulb so we get the light bulb so in order to be uh, affected the light bulb implements a use interface so we have to cast uh, this is something I made for this to be switchable so we cast to use and we have to deactivate this I don't know exactly why so this uh, so now we can just uh, call the use um, function of the light bulb which what this does actually if you go into it well it's in the light bulb but what this does is actually switch the light bulb either on or either off depending uh, what its state was before so because its state changes uh, uh, of the lever we're gonna stay uh, change the state of the light bulb also now because the uh, the um, our on variable was false before and our light bulb is by default false then its original position should mean that the light bulb it's staying off so let's try it like this so as you can see it's off like like uh, like that right now if we turn if we go over the zero position it's going to turn on and same thing it comes back okay so if you try you can try this also with the wait So as you can see, it works, no problem. So what if we wanted to have two positions? So let's say the, uh, the handle, it stays here now. And if we pull it here, then it comes back to its original position. But what if we want it uh, to have two positions so one is here and when we pass the zero mark into the minus rotation then we want it to stick to this location so now it's very easy to do that we just have to we have already compared its position here its rotation sorry so this is true when the rotation is minus so in order to set where it's uh, gonna wanna go uh, if we look here it's called target orientation what we said before so we we're gonna change this so we're gonna take the physics constraint and change it target orientation angular target orientation okay So now the orientation, we just split it because we're going to set only the y-axis. And here we're going to use, sorry, we'll take this like this. And um, we're going to use a select like this. So if this is true, that means it's in minus. So it's going to try to go to minus 45 degrees. And otherwise it's gonna go to plus 45 and of course you can use this here you can uh, use how many uh, states you want you can use uh, plus 30 plus 60 or something so you have multiple positions but we're just gonna use two for now for this example so let's see so if we pull it down when we pass the vertical, as you can see, it tries to pull down and 
if we let it go, it goes to the other position. So it stays on indefinitely. Okay, and when we pull it back again, same thing. And if we if we take the weight and put it around this, it will pull it down. And if we take it off, it will stay down. So now it has two positions for this. Now this is it. The only thing I wanted to show you, it's let's deactivate this. Uh, okay, so we'll bypass it. Okay. The only thing I wanted to show you is how the strength that we put here affects the interaction between the objects. So this strength actually uh, determines, sorry, how fast the handle comes back to its position. Let's say its position was here and we move it here. So the strength applies a force that makes it come back. So if this force here is strong, then we'll, it will come back fast. If it's weaker, it, uh, it will come back slower. And actually, if it's really weak, let's say 100 like this, or yes. So let's see what happens like this. So as you can see, it stays on. Why? Because it's because it's affected by gravity. As, let's see. So if we let it go, it will actually fall because gravity is too strong. So this force here, we're gonna have to, if you want a snappy lever, that put it high. Now you may be thinking that this force actually um, uh, when you when you modify this, it's gonna actually modify a lot how it behaves with other objects. Because usually, if you think it's like a spring, then of course it's if it's if this spring is stronger, then it's gonna pull this more. So and it does that, but it doesn't actually have that much of an influence. Sorry. So let's see. Now if this it pulls it really fast. Let's say we double it. And if we double it, we should see a big difference, but it's not that big of a difference. And why is that? Well, if we leave it to 3000 like this, and we test it's because this strength as you can see here so it pulls it down really fast okay this strength here is actually uh, scaled by the mass of the handle because when the handle interacts with other objects it actually transfers impulse which is mass times speed uh, times velocity sorry so that means that the velocity created by the force that we applied to make it come back, it's actually scaled by the mass. So see, we have a really small mass here. But if we change this to 100, and remember that we left the, the same strength here, okay, as before when it came down really fast. So let's see what happens now so i've changed the mass i've it's a hundred times stronger or more actually so if it shouldn't actually uh, affect this because the mass in real world the mass of the handle shouldn't affect this uh, if it's a spring it should act with the same force more or less actually and so now if we if we if we uh, test it we can see that it actually it barely moves and Again, that is because the strength that we have here in the physics constraint is scaled by the mass. It's actually by the proportion of the mass between this and the weight. As you can see here, the weight has 12 kilos. So, uh, if we want the lever to be affected more or less by other weights, we have to set the mass here. So if for me, what works here is 0 
because what I want it to be uh, to go all the way down so it keeps the light turned on okay and it also uh, it stays uh, hooked here okay so this is one thing you should watch for okay so this is it thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye